Hi everyone, quick intro for you today. For those of you who have been so patient watching the longer running videos of both inside and outside views of the cockpit, today we put a segment together for you. Uh, I don't know, it's five, six minutes long, but it's synchronized view inside the cockpit and outside uh, pictures of the helicopter. So you can see what's going on pretty much at the same time inside and outside the cockpit. So we hope you like that. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Hummingbird flight testing update. So some new things to talk about this time. First off, really tickled with some of the changes. I'm up to 28 hours now, which is pretty good movement through the test program. Uh, and we showed you last time, I think, the uh, new attachments for the muffler. So there's 20 hours on those now, verse eight, when they failed the first time. So I'm feeling pretty good about those right now. I know 20 hours isn't a whole lot, but at least it's uh, more than twice what we had the first time. So that's good news, I think. Um, continue to do tweaking uh, with the blades. Uh, it's really, really nice in a hover right now. Fairly smooth, a little bit of stick shake. Matter of fact, we're gonna show you some hovering video here in the update and uh, have spent a lot of time the last two days doing uh, hovering. Actually, yesterday I hovered for two 30 minute sessions when I say hovering, I'm doing a lot of testing within that was hovering. So it's up and down the runway, it's forward, it's back hovering, it's turns around a point, it's some 360s around a point, and, uh, you know, stops forward and settling and pickups. So uh, a real too long workout session yesterday for a reason I'm going to share with you. Friday, stretched my wings and went over to Falcon Field and saw a lot of my RV squadron buddies from the full throttle formation team and the RV squadron. And uh, when I started up to come home, I didn't have any rotor RPM. It actually took about uh, six starts there of the rotor to get the RPM indication up on the rotor. Rotor RPM is pretty important in a helicopter. I thought it was actually going to get stuck there. Uh, why is that? So it's really, you know, you can hear that they're engaged and running together because they do match the engine on the indication, the tack and the rotor RPM. And I say tack, I say the engine tachometer. So, but it's really, really important if that engine should fail because one of the things you have to manage in an auto rotation is the rotor RPM. So that one, you have enough left over at the end to flare and you keep the rotor going at such a speed that it actually does allow you to auto rotate down. If you go too slow, the blades can stop and you'll never get them restarted again. And then it's, uh, you know, hasta la vista, quite candidly. So uh, anyway, did get it working, came home and did a bunch of troubleshooting. And I'll show you how you pick up uh, rotor RPM here. Engine RPM is usually picked up from magnetos or a tack. Uh, sender on the back of the engine. In this case, we've got two engine RPM pickups. They're both on magnetos, one on the Surefly and one magneto pickup on the Slick Mag. But if you look closely up here, this is a transmission and the transmission actually has a takeoff for a tack generator to, uh, for the rotor RPMs. It's connected with a cannon plug here. It's got four nuts and obviously I stage this. I pull this off. And uh, interesting enough, when I went to look up the part number, brought back a lot of memories, I replaced a lot of these in my days in the Air Force. It's uh, nothing but a four-pole AC tech generator, an AN-54, was it the 77? Yes. Yeah, 50, uh, no, yes, 55, 5547-2. Yes. Okay, and uh, so they're simple to check, basically. All I did was leave it connected and uh, put a drill up there and we watch the indicator in the cockpit and we'll show you a picture of that, still picture here, and got nothing out of this. I did put it on an oscilloscope. They're pretty simple. They're just three wires, A, B, C, A and B are the signals and C, B in the ground. And uh, I was getting a signal out of it with the oscilloscope, but not very clean signal. So. Uh, anyway, talked to Brad at Vertical Aviation, stellar support from that company still. Uh, a new one should be here tomorrow, so I'm excited to get that. But when you the... say new, it isn't actually new because it's not new technology, correct? Yeah, these are like 1960s, so most of them, once in a while you can find a new old stock one. Matter of fact, I found one on eBay and I uh, figured it better be good to have a spare. So uh, anyway, but yes, they are all overhauled. Good question. Uh, and then um, one of the things I did do to verify that it's not the indicator because I didn't want to wait the weekend and get a new in, uh, generator and it 
it, it be the indicator, is uh, Brad gave me a hint. It turns out the tack for the engine is the same signal as for the rotor RPM. So I swapped those, started up the engine, and sure enough, the rotor worked very, the rotor indication worked very nicely. So I'm excited. I think one of them might show up today, so that'll be good, although we have some weather moving in. So <clears throat> that kind of cut out any kind of flying away from the airport over the weekend, and the weather was just gorgeous with the, <laughs> hardly any wind yesterday and this morning, although we have some weather moving in now. So <clears throat> not to be stuck on the ground, you know, you really don't need a rotor RPM to hover. If the engine quits in a hover, the last thing you're going to do is look at your rotor RPM. Basically, the helicopter settles, you cushion with collective, and you're done. So, uh, well, I can get a lot of hover practice done, and that's what I did. And it was good because it was warm yesterday, and, uh, you know, staying in a hover for 30 minutes at a time, you know, just a little bit of forward motion, side, back, reverse, et cetera, that's really the highest power settings that you're using in the helicopter. So I was running pretty much 75% power there for 30 minutes at a time, and it was a great workout. I never saw the oil temp go above 196 or so, and then the cylinder head temp stayed around. The highest one was 420. And then as soon as you, you know, set down to, was practicing some lift off and set down, they, they drop immediately below 400. So the engine seems to be breaking in very nicely. Uh, oil consumption has stabilized. So uh, we're at a total of 28 hours. At 35 hours, I will probably change over to uh, the Philips uh, 20W50. So... Uh, can't think of anything else right now. Enjoy the videos. Uh, I certainly had a lot of fun hovering, and I hope you'll enjoy watching them as much as I did flying them. Take care.